How Manchester United acted in the summer transfer market was pretty unsustainable. We spent like 230 mil. We're not going to go out every summer and spend 70 mil on players like Casemiro, 80 mil on players like Anthony. We have to be smarter with our signings and make more signings like Tyrell Malassia, which is why it's interesting to see over the last week or so, stories linking Jeremy Fringpong to Manchester United. A 21-year-old Bayer Leverkusen right back is certainly of the profile of signing that I think Eric Ten Hag would want to be making. So I'm going to run through the full story of the Fringpong rumours. Where did they start? How have they developed? What sort of defender is he? And could he join Manchester United? I'm going to cover it all in this video. As I do, it's what I do in these full story videos. I take a look at everything and I try to help you understand the whole situation. So make sure you please drop a like on these videos. They do take some time to research, but I enjoy doing them. But Jeremy Fringpong, he is a 21-year-old right back who plays currently for Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, I'll, I'll explain his career path to date. But he's somebody who, despite but despite Bayer Leverkusen right now being 16th, 15th, sorry, on the verge of the relegation zone in the Bundesliga, he is certainly catching the eye. Now, what I'm going to do now is give you the full story of how these links to Manchester United began. And they began with Florian Plettenberg, who writes for Sky Sports Germany. This was, what, four days ago saying, look, Frimpong, Next to other players, he's on the list of Manchester United. United want to sign a quality right back in the January transfer window. January, that's an interesting one there. At the latest in the summer. 21-year-old is a key player for Leverkusen and has a contract until 2025. We go to the actual article over on Sky Sports Germany saying, look, there's no contact yet between Manchester United and his agents. He's got that contract until 2025. I didn't actually realise that Xavier Alonso just became their manager. Maybe they'd improve. But there's 15th in the table at the moment. So that's going to take a little bit of power away in terms of any sort of negotiation. Now, Fabrizio Romano's joined in and he said that Manchester United have sent scouts more than three times to watch the performances of Jeremy Fringpong. They are following him and they know him very well. A little bit more detail saying, look, there are multiple clubs interested in Jeremy Frimpong. He's been pre-selected for the Dutch national team and he scored again at the weekend. That current deal expires in 2025. Now, my first question is, what scouts are we sending to watch Jeremy Fringpong in action? We got rid of Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout in the summer at this moment in time, unless appointments have been made behind the scenes quietly. We do, uh, what, who, uh, what scouts are being sent? But Jeremy Fringpong, look, he's definitely, you can understand the links between Manchester United and him. At least not for the fact that he's Dutch, so he ticks that box. I don't think we're going to be doing that as a sustainable approach forever. But again, until we know what Manchester United's new actual setup is, United have got to listen to Eric Ten Hag maybe a little bit more than they normally would when it comes to transfers and when it comes to suggestions of where to look. Now, Jeremy Fringpong is a player who started in the Man City. I don't, don't know whether he started in City's academy, but he made, I think, over 60 appearances for their under-16s, 18s, 19s and 23 team. And then he went from there, he went to Celtic, had a couple of good seasons at Celtic before he earned his move to Bayer Leverkusen. And that's where he's sort of been making a name for himself. Uh, I mean, no, not that. He made a name for himself at Celtic as well. But he just he's continuing to improve and impress to the point where he's now he's getting on the on the skirts of that Dutch national team. I wonder whether he'll go to the World Cup or not. Maybe he'll be a player whose profile gets blown up because of what? Because there will be players at this World Cup who go in and you know, it happens at every single World Cup. And this World Cup will be no different. So maybe Fringpon's going to be a player that we should watch. But in terms of what sort of right back he is, He's aggressive. He likes going forward. He's certainly not Aaron Wambasaka. A quick look here uh, at FB Ref in terms of his actual comparison to other right backs. You know how these work. The, the higher the number, the better he is compared to other right backs in that position. And look, he's in the top one percentile for non-penalty goals, non-penalty expected assists, uh, progressive carries. Wow. Look at that. He likes to bring the ball forward. Dribbles completed. He likes to bring the... And touches in the attack and penalty area. Now, from a defensive perspective, he's not somebody who really is doing too much at right back. And that's why, look, look at the player he's compared to on, on a similar level. Yannick Carrasco. Is he a right back? I don't really see him as a right back. I see him more as a right winger. He is somebody who is very aggressive and going forward. Now, this is a, bit, a little bit of an old article from, I think, last year over on Bundesliga.com trying to give you a little bit of insight into who Jeremy Frimpong is as a player. I'm actually going to do a full scout report on him in another video. 
But just to give you a little bit of the understanding of the basics of what game he is, he said, look, when his teams are in possession, Frimpong likes to behave like a right winger rather than a right back. He has the pace to eat up the ground in the final third and boasts a keen eye for a decisive pass. He doesn't shirk defensive duties. His acceleration, the fuel for some rocket propelled recovery challenges. Now that might remind you of a certain Tyrell Manasseh and how he plays. A quick look at Sofa score and you can have a look at his heat map. <laughs> this is so far this season in the Bundesliga. Let's have a look at last season in the Bundesliga. You can see this guy, A, hugs the flank, B, loves getting forward. Look at that as well. In 2021 season, he was more as a right winger than he was as a right back. He loves going forward. Absolutely no doubt. And I, as I said, I think that the comparison there to Malasia is interesting because it's a very similar profile to Tyrell Malasia. And I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of, not that, of what Ten Hag needs to do with his signings. We need more signings like Tyrell Malasia to be sustainable as a football club. As I said, look, we can't go every summer and try and do madness like signing Casemiro for 70 mil and signing Anthony for 83 mil. It was a one-off in a summer where United didn't really have the structure in place to find those smart signings. But we as a football club need far more smart signings like Tyrell Malasia, which is exactly why I understand the links with this lad, Jeremy Fringpong. And in terms of where he fits in the team, I mean, it's kind of obvious where he fits in the team. In the same way that Malasia came in and he took that left-back spot after, what was it, Brighton and Brentford, uh, Shaw was dropped. Malasia came in for the next four games. Absolutely, he was fantastic. He really, really was. Then he had a couple of bad games against Omanir. Then he got put on the bench and now Luke Shaw is looking fantastic. That's effectively what Frimpong would, that's what uh, Eric Ten Hag would want from Frimpong. He'll be there, wait, hypothetically, if we sign him in January. Uh, Delo would still be our first choice right back, but it would give Eric Ten Hag the opportunity to maybe take Delo out of a game and bring Fringpong in. And he's somebody, as I said, who, basically at this moment in time at Manchester United, if you were to take Diogo Delo out of that starting 11, I don't know who the hell you play at right back. You could play Wan-Bissaka there, but he's just not the same right back at all. It just doesn't work. It's a completely different style of player. You could put Malasia there, but he's a left back. I mean, it's probably the most likely that you could put Lindelof there. He's played in there, but then we've got Varane injured at the moment. It's a big, big weakness for Manchester United is what happens if Delo gets injured. And I think Eric Ten Hag knows that. It's abundantly obvious. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to see that we need that cover at right back, which is exactly why... I understand these links with Jeremy Fringpong. As I said, United have got to be smarter in the market. We have to identify players like Fringpong. Look, I don't know what what's his 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 value over on transfer marks is twenty two and a half million. But with Bayer Leverkusen sinking towards a relegation zone, maybe it'll improve under Xavi Alonso. Maybe it won't. He's got a contract until twenty twenty five, so he can't, he's not available on a free transfer at all. But it's you can understand the fact that United should be looking at him. Someone in the region of 20 to 30 million, you would imagine, would get the conversation started at the very, very least. And from a profile perspective, you can see where he ticks the box. That's not the right one. That's not the right one. Where is it? Is it that one? That's not the right one either. Oh, my God. There's too many windows open. Where is it? Have I closed it? There we go. We got there. We got there in the end. You can see the sort of profile he is. Defensively, he lacks a little bit. But he's got good recovery tackles. Hmm. He's very good going forward. Hmm. Likes to put it in the opposition's box. Hmm. It's the exact same sort of signing as Tyrell Malasia. And he's made a very positive impact. And clearly, even if it doesn't work out with Tyrell Malasia, we will be able to sell him on for a profit in the future. And that's how we have to operate as a football club to change things. So that's the full story with the links of Frimpon to United. Let's see what happens and how it develops. I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about the profile of the player he is why it would be a smart signing, why you can understand why Ten Hag would be looking at him. But let's find out how it continues to develop. Maybe it won't happen in January. Maybe it'll be more for the summer. And maybe he'll be one of those players that does end up going to the World Cup and his, and his status goes up a little bit. You can let me know what you think about Fring Pong in the comments below. Is that the sort of signings we need to be making more of? You can let me know. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But Fring Pong, this is an interesting one, I think. An interesting one. I, I would actually expect this one to develop.